Uh, happy to come to Shenzhen. Uh, so my name is Patrick. Uh, I'm the co-founder and the CEO of the Quantum Project. So Quantum is a project we want to try to improve the, uh, the improve like the, the scalability and improve like the, uh, the to give the smart contract ability to the Bitcoin network. Uh, the project is growing very fast. We started the project in 2016. And right now, uh, we have 1.5 million like uh, individual address in the quantum network, and uh, the daily volume is kind of more than 100 million dollars per day. Yeah, great. Um, so, so I think that you know, sort of, sort of a blockchain side stage. Um, again, I, I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but we have to address the uh, the Bitcoin in the room. Let's say um, when we're when when we're looking at uh, the current the current markets. Um, you know, it's it's there's 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 a lot been going on in let's let's call it the traditional markets. There's a, there's a lot been going on in, in in the crypto markets. Bit of a, a bit of a painful painful year uh, for you guys as, as, yes. as well. Can you, so talk talk about some of the challenges that you've seen this year. Uh, I think right now, uh, still the whole crypto market facing few challenges. Yeah, the the, the most uh, like uh, the biggest challenge is still come from the regulation. Uh, like uh, all the regulation, they still are trying hard to figure out what what they wanted to do uh, with the blockchain uh, startup, with the, all the projects, uh, and th that's one of the most like uh, important. Th that's one of the most like uh, biggest challenges right now, uh, because for the ICO and for the even the STO, uh, they are trying to figure out how can they be uh, compliant. Yeah, that's the first challenge. The second challenge is still the technical uh, bottleneck. Uh, we are facing the scalability. We are facing uh, like uh, how can we uh, build the real DApps on the blockchain world? Uh, yeah, I think that that's a second challenge. Yeah, and the third challenge is still about the education. Uh, it's about the media, about uh, all the uh, how. It's it's about like uh, how can we tell the true story of the cryptocurrency, tell the true story of the blockchain? Because people are always, you know, they want to catch the bubble, and uh, people uh, when when the when the market crash, people lose their confidence. But personally, I think even in the bearish market, it's still the best time to start your blockchain startup. Yeah, it's the best time. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's never it's never too late. Is what it's saying. never too late, and uh, because in next five year or ten year, I mean the whole industry will maybe 10 times bigger or like maybe 20 times bigger than right now. It's still the best time. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. And so, so, so Jack, I mean, so, you know, we, and uh, the early of 2018, we invested more than 50 dollars. I mean, we put uh, almost uh, all our resource in the dollars. But uh, like uh, recently, like last few months, like we stopped this action. We stopped like to put more resource. Because we realized, you know, the dollars maybe is not the good timing right now. It's too early for the dollars. So we changed our direction, and uh, we changed the direction to back to the original point. We changed the direction to uh, to try to build the infrastructure uh, for the for the next few years. So we have the possibility we can offer like a service for one billion people maybe in the near future. So we, we back to the original point to build the, the tech knowledge like a basement to be, build the technology like a funda uh, fundamental stuff for the for the next like uh, for the next wave yeah i think that's uh, that's one of our main focus right now back to the tech knowledge build the infrastructure uh, the depth is the depth is too early and the depth is going to be a very slow process uh, to we will compare to like the uh, regulation already we will compare with the technology like uh, driving the whole industry the depth is going to be very very slow yeah um, yeah, because I mean, the, the, the biggest the biggest thing, of course, is, is uh, scalability and just adoption. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I mean, this is this is one of the one of the one of the big problems with I mean, just blockchain across the board is that at the, like it's it's really saturated. There's there's a lot of different projects going on, all trying to be their own internal economies. Maybe it's a game, maybe it's a file trading software, maybe it's a, maybe it's a database, maybe it's whatever. Uh, but all these different companies are trying to do all these all these different things. But we still haven't seen that that inflection point for like actual real adoption. So so Jack Jack, I'm curious. Uh, like there was there was recently uh, a journalism uh, token that, that that tried to do an ICO, and did, didn't work unfortunately. Um, but you know like you know at Technode we we've thought about blockchain stuff, um, thought about it for like ten minutes and like okay this isn't going to work right because it, jur journalism uh, good journalism at least is centralized and it has to be centralized. Uh, if, if, if it's not centralized, then it's not really journalism anymore. Um, so blockchain for us never really made any sense. Um, so so kind of seeing these solutions, 
not finding problems and then dying off really, really isn't a, a bad thing. Um, but Patrick, so one of the one of the the, the, the big questions um, I think for for blockchain moving forward is interoperability, right? So, so we have we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have Quantum, we have Neo, we have all these different um, these different uh, coins and and, and protocols. Um, but but what, what's what's the how are they going to communicate? Yeah. And, and and what's it going to take to make them actually operate together? Yeah, uh, I think people are talking a lot, uh, like in the last uh, two years, about uh, how how can we build the cross-chain like a protocol. It's like the internet. Earlier we have the intranet, and then uh, we build the TCP/IP protocol. We build all the basic protocols, so we can have the internet together. Yeah. So uh, how can you really like connect different blockchain? There's a lot of solutions and a lot of projects, like the Cosmos, uh, like uh, some other blockchain, like uh, RSK, the Ruler Stock. They are trying to like build the bridge between Bitcoin and Ethereum, like between all the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin Child, like a Bitcoin Cash or a Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond. So they, they are building some solution for that. <laughs> so uh, I think that that's one of the direction to go, but that's not the most exciting direction. Personally, I think the most exciting direction is still we need to prepare the, the scalability for like uh, one billion user like Alipay or like a Visa or even uh, as high as Alipay yeah uh, because I, right now you know the whole industry are, are, are stuck there it's being started by by the users we have uh, maybe only 10 million users in the industry we need to grow the, the industry to 100 million user that that's can really make some difference and for all the technical like a breakthrough, like uh, there's so many ways people are trying to build the scalability. Uh, like uh, on Ethereum, they have the plasma. On Bitcoin, they have Lightning Network. And and the world like the layer two, it's become more and more popular. Uh, but uh, it will take some time. Yeah. So that's uh, kind of the reason why I think in 2019, it's still gonna be very very bearish market because people do not believe the story right now. Uh, because uh, Ethereum and EOS, they claim that they can offer a service for like uh, 10,000 dApps. But uh, okay, it's 10,000 dApps, but uh, most of the dApps, they only have 10 users. So it's not really some application. So people are trying to question like, okay, is it a true story to tell? Uh, well, like, uh, well, what's the missing part? People are trying to figure out what's the missing part of the, of the whole industry. And then people are rethinking, uh, recon reconsider like, okay, maybe we need back to the technical innovation. We build the infrastructure and then, uh, because it's impossible for you to expect like a Uber transaction, a Uber like application or Airbnb application when we only have the email. We do not even have mobile phone and you say, oh, I want to build a Uber application. How, how, how is it possible? Yeah, so I think people start to realize the the, 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 the truth, the very hard truth in the industry right now. Yeah.